Hey guys, February 19th of Reading Through Your Bible Chronologically in One Year. So glad that you're here. I do want to say a special welcome or a special hello to Thane and Mary Beth and my mom and Sherry. I just got some, some super encouraging messages from them this morning. And so I just wanted to get on here and say thank you so much. It was really, really encouraging to me, all those. Thank you. I needed them today. So you have been messengers from God. Thank you. Okay, Leviticus 9 through 11. So we are back at the beginning. We're still at the beginning of the tabernacle being used for the Israelites' worship. Up to this point, we've seen the tabernacle being built. We've seen the uh, tribal leaders offering, giving their offerings. We've seen the Levite tribe being set apart to work in the tabernacle. And yesterday we read about Aaron and his sons being ordained for the priesthood. And so I've read a couple different things that have differing opinions about in what order that happened. I have an opinion, but I'm not gonna offer it up because I'm not sure if it's correct. But just know that all four of those things are happening right at the very beginning, the, the, the starting point of using the tabernacle to worship. So immediately we see Moses turning over his priestly duties to Aaron and I just thought, man, there comes a time in our lives where we have to know when it's time to let go and it's time to hand something off and move on to our next thing. So I'm praying today that we would know that, that you would know that if there's something that God is wanting you to let go of and move on from, that you're able to do that. Okay, so then Aaron immediately offers up a sin offering for himself and a burnt offering for himself to get himself in right relation to God before he approaches God on behalf of the people. Then right after that, he offers a sin offering, a burnt offering, a grain offering, and a fellowship offering for the nation of Israel. And Moses says this is because God has said, do this because he's going to meet, He's going to uh, appear to them that day. And man, does he. In 924, after they offer all those offerings, fire blazed forth from the Lord's presence and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When the people saw this, they shouted with joy and fell down on the ground. So they're worshiping. And so what a great prescription for worship in that we offer ourselves and then we're able to see what God is already doing, and then we fall down in worship. And it's kind of a cycle, you know? We can offer ourselves, get quiet, listen, then we're able to see God, and then because we see God, we worship, and we're in a closer relationship with Him, and then we continue to um, offer ourselves so that we can hear Him, and that's a great cycle for us to remember um, when we're trying to grow our relationship with God, because we're not here to just gain knowledge and memorize Bible verses just to know them. It's, it's a way for us to know God, be in a relationship. Like, are we gaining more knowledge or are we having conversation with God? You know, we want to make sure that we are having conversation and our relationship is growing. We're not just growing a lot of knowledge. Okay, then Leviticus 10, unfortunately, we see that Aaron's sons are killed because they offer up some sort of wrong or foreign fire. Um, we don't know exactly what that was. We're thinking it's they offered up the wrong kind of incense. And it just made me think of how important it is to not twist the word. And they were trying to worship God in their own way. And we need to make sure we have the word of God. We have the revealed word of God and can read it every day. And it's absolute truth. We don't want to read the Bible and start twisting it into what we want it to say about ourselves or about God or about people. It's the absolute truth. And we need to walk in that and not try to worship God in our own way or make the Bible um, conform to our way of thinking. Our way of thinking needs to conform to the Bible and we need to be worshiping God in the way that he would have us in spirit and in truth. And it's also a reminder that these guys were priests. They were teaching the law. And it's, you know, in James, it talks about how being a teacher of the word is a, is a high calling. And so if any of us are teaching the word, we are wise if we ask God to speak through us and that anything that's from us would fall to the ground that's not from him or that we wouldn't even say it. And, you know, if we end up teaching something that's incorrect, that we would go back and and correct it. It's, it's a high calling and we need to make sure that we're not taking it lightly. And then in Leviticus 10, 8, God speaks directly to Aaron. And this is the first time that we've seen God speak to Aaron instead of speaking to Moses and then Moses speaking to Aaron. And this was a great reminder to me that in these New Testament times, living after the cross, we have direct access to God. We don't need anybody to intercede for us. We have, I mean, besides Jesus intercedes for us, but we don't need another person 
to uh, be our in-between between us and God. We have direct access. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And then in Leviticus 11, we see uh, some uh, regulations on ceremonially clean and unclean. And it's important to know that just because you were ceremonially unclean, it didn't mean that you were bad or sinful. I mean, some of this stuff was just a condition that came after like childbirth or things like that or an illness. So it wasn't that you were considered bad or gross. It was just there was a, a, a state in which God said people needed to be to to approach him. And so from here we see, you know, what they can eat and what they can't eat. And yes, there were some health reasons for that, but really we think it was, it was a way for Israelite, the Israelites to distinguish themselves as God's people. They were always going to be different. And that is something that we need to get used to as well. You are going to be different from the world around you. You want to be in the world. You want to be relatable. You want to be, you don't want to be that weird, freaky Christian person. You want to be relatable to anybody, but you're always going to be different. And you got to make peace with that because that's what draws people to Christ in the first place is they see that you're different and they want what you have. So make peace with being different enough. You're relatable, but you're different because Christ lives in you and there's life flowing out of you. So be okay with that. Okay, and then at the end of 11, we just see, you know, just God saying, don't even touch the carcass, don't even touch the, the dead body. And it's, it was a reminder to me, like, I don't want to be flirting with things that God doesn't want me to be doing, like walking right up to the line and being like, well, I'm going to do everything except for that thing that God said not to do. That's just flirting with the enemy and you're just asking for trouble, you know? I think about Lot in the Old Testament where he moved into, you know, right next to Sodom and then Sodom and Gomorrah, one of those, and then all of a sudden we see him living living in Sodom and Gomorrah. And so it's just a reminder, like, let's not flirt with the enemy. Let's not flirt with God says, with the things that God says that he doesn't want us doing because we are not meant to do those things for a reason. It's for our protection and for his glory. So, you know, stay away from those things. Okay. All right. Tomorrow, Leviticus 12 through 1432. And I will talk to you then. Goodbye.